Once your coil pot is nice and smooth, it is time to start cutting out your negative space. So you're gonna look at your sketches and I've got a couple of tricks that will help you. The first one is to make sure that the inside of your coil pot is all the way smooth. So you wanna make sure it's smooth on the inside and outside because it's easier to smooth before you do your cutouts. The second thing is to take your image that you want to put on your pot and I would cut it out of paper and then this one you can see it, it looks like it's laminated but I actually just covered it in packing tape and then cut it out so that it doesn't get wet and soggy as I go. So this is just covered in tape and then I cut out the overall image. Um, the way I got this image, so I drew it, but you, what you could also do is you could pull up the image in a Google Doc and you could resize it to the size that you think you need and then you could put your paper on top and then trace your Google Doc. Um, so the backlight on your screen ends up looking like a light table. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, um, as I'm going to cut out, I'm gonna cut out probably every other here I'm gonna bring them down a little lower. Um, you don't really wanna go, if you put your pinky between kind of the lip and where you're gonna cut out, you don't wanna go much higher than that. So like about a half inch, you're gonna to wanna to leave all around the rim. And then what I'll do is I can trace it with a pencil. I can also trace it with uh, one of your paper clips. I'm gonna use my needle tool which is like what your paper clips are substituting for. I'm gonna trace one, and then I would trace them all the way around um, to complete my design, leaving a finger's width in between each. So if I were gonna do this again, get it all lined up so it makes sense, and I wanna leave at least a finger's length in between before I trace my next one. You can still have different designs that are closer, they just can't be carved all the way through because you want that strength in your clay. There we go. All right, so when you're ready to start cutting out, there's a couple tools that you can use. Number one, you can use your modeling tool. Um, it will be a little bit harder because it's not very sharp. You can use your paper clip and I would suggest like taping it to a pencil at the end and you can start kind of sawing your way through. A couple other options that you can use would be an X-Acto knife. So if you have an X-Acto knife at your house and you know how to use it safely and your parents are pretty comfortable with it, um, you could try an X-Acto knife. So I'm going in kind of little spurts here with my X-Acto knife. If your parents are okay with it and you are willing to clean it really well, you could also use a kitchen knife to cut through your clay. All right, so I made my first pass through. Now, I don't think it's fully ready. And what I can do is I can show you the inside. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna check on the inside of your pot to see whether or not it's cut all the way through. So if you look inside my pot here, it's not cut all the way through everywhere. So I'm gonna go back over it and do one more pass through. Now I'm done cutting my second pass through. Now I can go through and I can maybe check with my needle tool. And I, as I'm pushing it, it's not really coming out very well. Um, one thing that is really helpful to do is to take whatever you're cutting with and cut it into sections. So rather than pulling my whole body out at once, I'm just gonna pull maybe one section of my leg out. And that's gonna help me to kind of avoid putting huge gouges into it. So if I take it out in small sections, pull it out this way, 
I'm probably going to have a little bit better luck. Especially with your little details like this horse's ear. If your clay pot ends up being really, really thick, you could thin it out a little bit from the inside using your loop tool. So you can go through before you carve out and you can thin it out a little bit. All right, so I've got my first cutout here. Now, instead of leaving it this way, it's gonna be really sharp. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my needle tool or your, um, in your case, your paper clip attached to a pencil and all you're doing is you're running that paper clip over the edge and you're just smoothing up all of the cut lines. Just running it all the way through should take care of a good chunk of those cut marks and it should help you kind of define it a little bit more too. You can see how it's getting a little bit smoother in those cut areas. Uh, on the outside, what you're gonna wanna do is you can take your loop tool and all this extra stuff, these little dingleberries, you wanna get those right off. Once you're done kind of smoothing those out, I would take your finger and you're going to be breaking the corner. And what that means is you're just running your finger over the corner so it doesn't get so sharp. And you're pushing the clay away from the opening because you can blend it back into the pot itself or you can take away it away much easier if you're pulling the clay away from the opening. Then on the inside, what you'll do is you'll notice that it's not as nice on the inside here as it is on the outside. Let's see. So what you'll do is you'll take your fingers and again, you're going to be pulling the clay away from the opening and blending it in with the area around it. You'll do that all the way around with all of your openings. If you're thinking that you want to do some um, holes, the first thing that you're going to do is actually make the hole. Let's say I'm going to do a hole right here. You can stick anything pointy and sharp in there, and then as you keep making it bigger this way, it'll keep making your hole a little bit bigger. And then again, you're going to go through and you're going to, as you go around in a circle, you'll make the hole bigger and you can push the clay away from the hole. And you'll do that on the inside as well, same process. Uh, so that is making holes. You want you don't want really, really tiny pinprick holes because oftentimes they get filled with glaze. Um, what you want are kind of some decent sized holes. I, I would go, you could go a little bit smaller than this, but I wouldn't go much smaller or you won't be able to see light poking through. 